and welcome back. I'm super excited because we're here today and we're going to have a look at the brand spanking new Ideal T&T GP saddle. So T&T stands for traditional and technical. And it's basically a combination of what we think of when we think of Ideal saddles, like traditional, handmade, beautiful leather. Now with the more added modern element of technicality in them, in that they are on adjustable trees. So if, like me, you're super excited to have a closer look at one of these brand spanking new saddles, sit back, make yourselves a cup of tea, and hopefully, enjoy. First of all, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Ideal for sending me out this saddle to look at. It's been in the making for quite a while now and I've been super, super excited to get my hands on it. And here it is, I've got my hands on it. Before we go into this saddle in depth, let's have a quick chat about Ideal. Most of us, I'm sure, if not all of us, have heard of Ideal Saddlery. So Ideal are a really, really traditional saddlery based in the UK in Walsall, where the heart of saddle making happens. They're a proper old fashioned factory. All of their saddles are made by amazing saddlers, handmade, stitched beautifully, beautiful English leather. They've got a real reputation for having lovely, lovely, lovely saddles. But they are known for their traditional saddles. So their saddles are traditionally made. They're made on the traditional wooden trees. They're made in a really traditional way. And now they've brought out these. So these are adjustable. So they're trying to keep up with that modern day trend of having these adjustable saddles, the ones with the gullet bars in the front. And this is one of them. They've had a dressage and a jump version out for a few months now. And now it's time for the GP to make its debut. And here it is. What I'm hoping we find, and fingers crossed, I'm hoping that we find that the saddles are still made with that real nice craftsmanship, that really handmade, good quality feel, that the adjustable gullet bar makes them a little bit more hmm, versatile, maybe? It just keeps them caught up with the modern saddles now that have the adjustable gullet bar. So let's uncover it. First of all, and I know this is a really silly small thing to say, but this cover is beautiful. And I just think that when you get a saddle and it has a really beautiful cover, it makes in your head you think, I've got a beautiful saddle in there. So we peel it off here and we can see like the cover is all fleece lined, look at that. So I sell a lot of Ideal saddles. Ideal also make my brand of service for me. So I'm quite, quite used to Ideal saddles. And I do really rate them. I think they're really good, they're really nicely made. Some of my favorite saddles um, and girths, in fact, are made by Ideal. So, when we look at it here, it looks to be a very traditionally made ideal saddle. It's not until we look at the front here and we can see the little screwy things that we realise it's got an adjustable gullet bar. I'm just going to read what it says on its little label. Not only can you choose the quality of your materials and enjoy the benefits of a custom made saddle for your horse, your TNT will also be adjustable for the changing seasons or the growth of your youngster. So basically it's saying that with this interchangeable gullet bar that it has at the front now, it can be changed, it can be widened, it can be narrowed in order to fit a horse that's changing shape. Now I've said this before and I'm going to say this a bazillion times again. Yes, saddles with gullet bars at the front are adjustable and they're adjustable in the sense if your horse you know, was a medium wide and they put on a little bit of weight and you need to go up to a wide fit, that's perfect. But being adjustable at the front doesn't change anything else about like the shape of the tree. The saddle itself still has to fit the horse you can just adjust the front with that gullet bar, but like changing of seasons, growing, gaining some muscle, things like that. And whilst these are really handy for young horses, because as they grow off from what the thing that changes with them is that they widen slightly, or sometimes they lose a little bit of puppy fat and they narrow even, and it does mean that these are changeable with them, it doesn't always guarantee that it's always going to fit your horse for the rest of its life, because sometimes things happen like a horse will suddenly get a really high wither or their back shape itself will change as a horse gets much older. Sometimes their backs go from being quite straight to being a little bit dipped and in that case, and in that sense, sometimes it's actually a different tree shape that you need rather than a different width at the front. Whilst I love this idea, please do remember it doesn't mean that it's going to fit your horse forever and ever and ever, 100%. It might do, and it's certainly more likely to than the fact that it's so interchangeable. You can rest assured, safe in the knowledge, that our skills craftsmen will take the care and attention that they take with every saddle that they make, carrying 75 years of history with them. Now, ideal have 75 years of history, the saddlers individually don't, because that make them very odd. 
So 75 years I ideally have been making saddles for, and they definitely know their stuff when it comes to making saddles, without a doubt. Tells you about how to look after it, I won't bore you all with that, except I will say that they say very much what I say, which is don't try to hasten the aging process with oils, have patience. The secret of new leather is to allow it to age gracefully. And that is so true. When you've got something that's such good quality leather, you don't need to oil it. It's got enough of its own natural oils in it. And these saddles are made out of amazing quality leather. So you don't need to get them and oil them like we used to in the olden days. In them olden days, when we used to dunk our bridles into a bucket of oil. Mm -mm -mm. It's got a 12 month warranty on the saddle and there is a three year warranty on the tree. I'll get into the tree later on, but the trees are pretty indestructible. Now, where should we start? Let's start at the overall kind of look, quality, feel of it. One thing that I was a little bit worried about was that they were going down the route of kind of mass marketed adjustable saddles and that they were going to lose that kind of, mm, what is it like, yumminess. Well, that's a really bad word. You know what I mean, like really nice quality like you just want to lick it and sniff it kind of leather but they haven't actually i have to say so let's have a look at the all-round kind of feel of it quality of it leather on it and then we'll have a look at like things like the girth strapping and the gullet bar and the tree and things like that so overall this looks like an ideal saddle to me it doesn't look like there's any less care being taken on it it's still all beautifully made the leather on the seat is absolutely i wish you had smell a vision here can you smell it can you smell it? it? Smells delicious. So the shape of it is designed to fit a wide range of horses. So it's got a little bit of shape at the front, so if you've got a horse with a bit of a wither, it's a little bit straighter through the middle and then you've got a nice seat here. And we look at these panels here, so this is the rear facing, all sewn on beautifully in the way that I do. do. See this here? All squishy and soft, nice flocked panels. It's got one of my favourite stirrup bars on it which is a little hook bar here. And just everything about it just says ideal. As in, not ideal, but as in the company ideal. Everything about it screams, I'm made by ideal. It looks idealish, it smells idealish. Is that a weird thing to say? But it does. The way that we know that it's an, one of their new ones is that it's got a different nail head here. It says technical and traditional. It's got another little one here on the stirrup keeper and then it's got at the front here where we put those screws to hold the gullet bar in. So before we open up and look in there let's have a look at the girthing because another thing that they have done I've just noticed is they've changed their girthing. They've got the girthing that I love. So they've put now their girth straps onto these little dingle dangles as I like to call them. They probably have an actual name, but I'm just gonna call it a dingle dangle for now. And it means that you can move them around. So anyone that has seen my videos about girth straps and we talked when we gave them names, and we called them point one, two, three balance. Well, this here has got point one, three balance. So we can have a point strap, we can have our normal first and third strap, or we can have a balance strap. So we can see here point one, three balance, yeah? That one comes out of the point of the tree, that one sits where the first strap would normally sit, that one sits where the third strap would normally sit, and that one sits at the back a little bit where the balance strap would be. And what it means is that us as saddle fitters, we can move your straps around without having to dismantle your whole saddle, rivet things to the tree, add webbing, add girth straps, they're there already. So pretty much all the girthing configurations that we can think of can be done now just by moving straps around. So that is genius. Pop marks here to Ideal. I'm so glad they've done this because it makes our jobs as saddle fitters so much easier and it makes saddle ownership for you guys much cheaper because it's a case of us swapping a girth strap over from one little dingle dangle to another takes about one and a half minutes. Instead of us having to take the saddle from you, back to our workshop, unstitch the whole saddle, rivet a bit of webbing to the tree, stitch a little bit of girth strap to the webbing, sew the whole saddle back up again, try and find a soft and die to bring the saddle back to you, etc, etc. This is genius. Genius. Now, don't get me wrong, Ideal aren't the first people to do this. Other companies have done this, and Ideal are now doing it too, and it is brilliant, and I love it. I love it. Well done, guys. So let's have a look at these panels underneath. They're nice, really nice standard panels. They're wool flops, they're nice and squishy, they will bed in nicely. The most beautiful leather ever. Yeah, I know you think I'm weird, but like, if I didn't love saddles and leather, then it shouldn't be my job. 
Again, these panels are designed to be really versatile. They're designed to fit a really wide range. Basically, they're aiming with this saddle. They're aiming to hit, a, you know, like a wide range of the market. It's not a specialist saddle. It's not designed for something with total shark fin withers and no muscles behind its withers. Equally, it's not designed for something with an absolutely flat wither, massive shoulders that needs a much more kind of what some people would call a hoop tree, some people would call like a yew tree, whatever. It's designed instead to fit a really wide range. It's on a really versatile tree, it's on really versatile panels. It will fit and fit well a lot of horses. It's got good shape knee blocks, so a really nice fairly meaty knee block here. And they're on velcro. So you can take them off and you can move them around or you can swap them for different ones if you want different ones. But being on Velcro makes them a little bit more adaptable as well. So in essence, basically, when you look at what they've done, they've put it on a really versatile tree, they've put it on really versatile panels, they've made knee blocks changeable, they've made the girthing changeable. They've made this saddle really so that it can and it will fit a really wide range of horses. A banana. Or a shrimp. It's on this one. Um, one of each. That works. I've got much too much. I do. So we did a test squares. So uh, I've got three packets. I'll go swim more. Oh. Banana. So we're going to quick look at the seat, quick look at the flap. How about the shape of the flaps? They are just a standard sort of GP forward cutness. They're not too forward, they're not too straight. They're just standard. And again, that adds to their versatility. They're just designed to be as versatile as possible, to fit as many riders, to fit as many horses as possible. That's what this is for. It's not a made to measure. It's not a custom made. It's a really good quality saddle designed to fit a wide range of horses. Does that make sense? Let's open it up. All garlic bar saddles you have to unscrew it someplace. Um, some are on the outside of the flap. This one is in here. That's an Allen key thing. We undo our little screwy thing. It's just a little screw. See? And we put it somewhere safe. I cannot tell you how many of these screws I drop. There's this. If anyone's interested, I use the number four on my Allen key thing. I don't know what that means. I presume it's the size. Or what? I don't know. Oh. And there we go, the other one out. Now this is where the magic happens. Just like all these saddles, they have a little point here that sits in the point pocket, which we need to pull out of the little point pocket. So this green here is the point of the tree, and we can see this funky colour green. This is the actual tree here, the tree material. It's on an injected moulded polymer tree. And you might just look at this and think, oh, it's a plastic tree, therefore it's the same as all the other plastic trees. But actually there's some differences with this and I'll get into that in a minute. We'll just have a little quick look instead at the gullet bar and things first. And then I'll talk to you briefly about the tree. Because it's actually, it's quite an innovative tree. Innovative. Innovative. So you take out the little points of the point pocket on both sides. And there we have it. This is where the gullet bar sits. Now you can see that this gullet bar is not straight, yeah? It has a curve to it. It kind of curves back like this. So why a curvy gullet bar? Why have they got a gullet bar that comes like this and curves back, do you know? Well, there are a few different reasons. Number one, it helps make the gullet bar itself a little bit more three-dimensional. It helps, it means that as the tree is adjusted, it helps it open up slightly further down the tree. Also, it means that these points here, these are the points, the way it angles, they sit sort of slightly angled backwards. They don't jam into the back of your pony's like shoulder blades, scapula. This is an unusual shape. So this, I can't think of any other gullet bars that are shaped like this. They might call it like an ergonomic shaping, anatomic shaping. They've done an awful lot of research on these. And again, Ideal have got so much experience with saddle making that it was only a matter of time really before they brought out something adjustable like this. And they've put a lot into it and they've put a lot of research into it and they have developed this gullet bar. And on first sight, you're a little bit like, oh, it's a funny shape. But then you look at it and you look at how it sits and it means that you can have this nice cut back bit of the head, come forward and then have that nice point directing slightly away from the horse's scapula. Oh yeah, I like it. And even in here, even the finish in here is still very ideal. As in, 
it's very good quality. The way that the bar sits in here, you know, it's got its own little housing to sit in, so there's no movement or wobble. I'm just gonna get the bar out so we can see how much flex is in the tree. So, here we go. <laughs> Hang on a minute, there we go. There's your gullet bar. Look, can you see that shape? Can you see how? So this is the front of it here. So can you see how it allows the saddle to be a little bit more cut back here? And then it goes like that there. Can we see that? Now another thing about the gullet bar that I like, can we see here, the little hole, it's oval rather than round, which means as a saddle fitter, when we change these bars, it makes it so much easier to line the hole up when you've got a little oval shape instead of a round shape. So that to you guys might look like, yeah, so what? To me, I'm like, oh yeah, makes it easier to find the hole. This is a medium wide being a blue. They go right down from a narrow, because they have a narrow medium, a medium, a medium wide, a wide, and they have one called a wide plus, which is like a cross between a wide and an extra wide. Um, and I really like that. I like the fact that they've got that extra little width in there because it's quite a popular width that is. And it means sometimes if you've got a horse that's not quite wide, not quite extra wide, but somewhere in between, you have that wide plus option, which is great. Then they have the extra wide. So yeah, narrow medium to extra wide with that extra little one that's called the wide plus in there. Pretty sure it's the only one on the market that's this shape. Can we see that nice little rearward facing point? Can we see how that would help? Yeah. So whilst we've got the bar out, so we can see here that there is some flex within the tree. There's some movement. We can also see it's a rather funky color. So a little stirrup bar is riveted on. Let's get the bar back in. Fold that back, the little points. Get these little points back into their point pocket. Now, I don't have one of the trees out of these saddles in my possession, and I don't think the idea would be too happy with me if I chopped up one of their new ones. So what I need is for you to have some imagination now as I show you some other trees, and I'm gonna talk you through them, and then we're gonna to have to imagine what I'm talking about. Okay, here is a normal, ideal tree. Can we see here that it's like, um, so it's wooded and it's coated and everything like that, and it's sprung and well, but can you see how it's got the shape here and it's hollow in the middle, yeah? And then it's got springs. And then what they do with these trees, they get a webbing. So think of like a seatbelt sort of thing. And they put it over here and then they pull it tight. And as they pull it tight, it gives them a little bit of shape to the tree and also gives it a bit of boingy boingy under your bum. So this is a normal sprung tree. Now what people like about these trees when they ride is there's quite a lot of give underneath your bum. And also for the horse, it's quite comfortable because there's a little bit of movement. And then we look at like a solid plastic tree. So this is a solid tree. This is in lots of other saddles. And these are great because they're really adjustable, etc., etc. This is not what in one of those TNT saddles. What's in one of those TNT saddles is basically, so imagine that this tree and this tree got together, had a one night fling, had a baby, what would happen? Well, you have to imagine in your brain, number one, imagine it's green, because I'm not sure why they have a green baby, but it's green because we've seen the ideal tree is green. So it's green, it's made out like of a polymer material like this, which is injected. These polymer trees are molded, they're made by a computer, they're computer-aided design, so they're always going to be symmetrical. But you imagine that, but in this shape. So they are still like a traditional tree, in that they're this shape, and they've got this hollow bit, and they've got the rails, and they've got the webbing, and they've got all of that, except the tree itself, the actual where this bit is wood, is made of that polymer material. Does that make sense? So they still have all of this stuff going on in them, all of these rivets. They still have that webbing that's wrapped around it and pulled tight and strained, it's called, and that gives it a little bit of boingy boinginess as well. They have all of that like this, except instead of being wood, it's this polymer material. And because of that, it means that you get the feel of a wooden tree, but the adjustability of a plastic forward slash polymer tree. Does that make sense? So if we were gonna try and train, change like a wooden tree, for example, from a narrow to an extra, extra wide, we just wouldn't be able to, because this material wouldn't be able to take it, it would crack. So in order to be able to make something go from a narrow to an extra wide, it has been one of those polymer trees, and those polymer trees there, which is what is in that TNT saddle. Maybe one day I'll get one of the trees to show you, but I'm not sure if they're like protected or something. So yeah, so polymer, plastic, material, all computer aided, all 
like molded and snazzy and modern and great and lightweight and moldable and adjustable to take it from a narrow medium to an extra wide great but shaped like this so you get all the advantages of what's called like a traditional sprung tree in a modern material which is why i guess their name is technical and traditional they've got a traditional shaped typed tree in there but made out of that more technical material which means it can be adjusted so what do you think because i know what i think i think the ideal have managed to somehow cross over really really well from traditional to technical joining them together brilliantly saddle itself looks Mm, smells, feels gorgeous. It feels like a proper traditional, beautifully made, Walsall UK made saddle, but it's on a special technical tree, which means we can put these rather funkily shaped garlic bars in to change them. Everybody knows I'm Ideal's number one fan, but I wouldn't be Ideal's number one fan if they weren't very good, would I? So they do make brilliant saddles. This is another example of them, just a much more modern version. Perfect for you if you've got a horse that fluctuates a little bit, you know, in the summer he gets a little bit fatter and he puts on a bit of weight and your saddle gets a bit tight, and in the winter he drops a little bit of weight. Or you've got a young horse who's growing and staying the same shape roughly from front to back, but just gets a little bit wider and wider and wider, or indeed narrower and narrower and narrower. They're brilliant for that. So what do I think they could improve on? Nothing really in terms of the saddle. I think the saddle itself is perfect. But what I would like to do is I'd like to see a top version. I'd like to see a version that was much flatter, like a really flat tree, really broad head, sort of more suitable for their very, very, very broad types. Because Ideal do something called the Ideal h &C, Highland and Cobb saddle, and it is, oh, it's brilliant. It fits so many of that really wide type really well. You know, there's ones with no withers and big shoulders and flat backs, broad ribs, brilliantly. If they could do one of these in that, Oh, that would be perfect. And maybe if they're going along that line, they can maybe also think of maybe doing a high withered version, something for those shark fin high withered types. Because I think if they did that, if they had like a high withered version, a standard version, and a cob version in the GP saddle, that's covering a lot of bases for us as saddle fitters. What do I really like about it? I like the fact it's adjustable. I love the fact that they've chosen to keep the traditional tree, but just make it out of a more modern material. And there's no surprise here, I love these girth straps. I love how they're proper, beautiful, traditional girth straps on a little dingle dangle so we can change them as and when we need to. Hopefully, we're going to see these saddles out and about now. They've been launched or are being launched or somewhere in the middle. And I think they're going to be really, really, really successful. I really hope they are, but they're lovely. So in terms of cost, what is the cost of them? Well, because they are still the beautifully crafted ideal saddles, they cost similar amounts to their normal saddles because they still have the same amount of work in them. It's still the same beautiful leather that's used. So don't expect these to be a super cheap option because they're not. The GP saddles are about 15.95. The jump saddles with two flaps about 1695 the mono flap jump about 1795 and then the dressage saddle is 1895 they come in all sizes from 16 and a half to 18 inches and they are obviously all adjustable with these gullet bars from anything from a narrow medium to an extra wide obviously come in black or brown maybe one day we'll do a video with one on a horse and see how it fits onto a horse but I have absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever that this little standard GP here is going to fit a really wide range of horses just because it's on a brilliant tree, brilliant panels, and it's beautifully made. What more could you want? Don't forget I do a live video on the last Friday of every month where you can join in and ask questions and ask me anything you want to ask me. I also upload videos at least once a week and have a really active Facebook page. So don't forget to look out for me anywhere on the internet hashtag a day in the life of a saddle fitter thank you ever so much for watching take care stay safe lots and lots of love